Hello my dear jewellery lovers, today I will tell you an entertaining story about Greville's ruby necklace. A legacy for the Queen Margaret Greville was a remarkable person. She was born in 1863 to a family of a longshoreman and a cook, Helen Anderson. Working in billionaire William McEwan's brewery, naturally, the way to the high society was forbidden to her, as well as in principle any more or less prominent way. Most likely, she would have repeated the fate of her mother and thousands of women living almost below the poverty line. If it weren't for one but, Margaret's mother's fate was not so simple. Thanks to its intricacies, the real father of the girl was not an unknown loader from the brewery and the direct owner of the brewery. And, most interestingly, little Margaret was not the fruit of a casual affair. William Macowan was truly in love with his Helen and in his daughter, in general, Sol did not tea. Since birth, she did not know anything to refuse. And when a clueless loader husband departed into the next world, and the parents were finally able to marry, before the already 21-year-old girl up and the prospect of a wonderful future, it overshadowed only that the high society would not accept her for anything. But even then, her loving daddy sorted it out quickly. Margaret married Ronald Greville, whose nobility would not have been disputed even by kings. Of course, the marriage was a well-considered and calculated enterprise that benefited both spouses. Margaret gave her husband, whose financial situation left much to be desired, a huge fortune, and he opened the door to her in such a desirable aristocratic society. However, the marriage Greville was absolutely happy, except for the fact that the couple had no children, but this did not have time to overshadow the relationship because just two years later Ronald died. Margaret no longer wished to tie herself to the bonds of marriage. Although this time at her door literally queued, instead of marriage, she began to enjoy life and she did it in a big way. Her children were replaced by numerous jewels, the best of the best, which she, being a socialite, not only bought in huge quantities, but also gladly wore enjoying the admiring and envious glances of others. Margaret ended her colourful life quite unremarkably. Having no heirs, she bequeathed all her jewellery not to anyone, but to her friend Queen Elizabeth. Not a bad ending for a cook's daughter, is it? Interestingly, no one knows exactly what jewellery and how much went to the royal family. The heiress was given a black tin box, and what was in it was not shown to the general public. However, there are many archive photos, portraits of Margaret herself, and documentary evidence depicting her lavish inheritance. And from them, we can roughly understand what exactly the English monarchs own today. Among the jewels carefully given to Queen Elizabeth by Margaret was a stunning necklace with a floral ornament created in 1907 by the masters of the Boucher and Jewelry House. It is made of silver and decorated with Burmese rubies and diamonds. Interestingly, Margaret often remodeled her jewellery to give it a more fashionable and modern shape, but the ruby necklace remained unchanged for the time being. In 1947, then Princess Elizabeth II became the new owner of the jewel. She received it as a wedding present. Unlike her mother, who never wore the necklace, Elizabeth II clearly developed a fondness for it, because she wore it in public many times. In the 50s, she shortened the necklace, making it closer to the neck according to the fashion of the time. It remains in this form to this day. But if you want to restore its original appearance, it's quite realistic, as the two removed parts are still in the royal vault. If you set a goal, you can find many events and official photos in which Elizabeth II was present in a ruby necklace. And in 2017, Kate, Duchess of Cambridge, appeared in it at a banquet at Buckingham Palace. However, the necklace did not move to the box of Prince William's wife. In 2018, it was worn again by Elizabeth at a banquet in honour of Commonwealth heads of government. I'm sure we will see this marvellous jewel on female representatives of the royal family many more times. The chic necklace was created to shine, which it has been doing for over a century. Did you like the necklace? Write a comment.